Hi, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, you could tune into so much stuff on uh, YouTube and watch so many different people. And um, I just really want to say thank you so much for tuning into um, my personal documentary called How I Choose to Live My Life. And today is part two of the introduction of who am I and who, what's my story. So I, I did put out a video um, two weeks ago that started to tell this story. But then last week, I really felt compelled to share something that was incredibly personal and incredibly um, vulnerable with everybody because people are having a terrible time and I'm hearing a lot about it. And whether I see it on Facebook or whether people call our office or whether it's my friends or people I know or anything else like that, mentally, it's affecting a lot of people what's happening. No matter what your situation is, this is something people haven't seen or done on any level at any time. I hadn't been that raw with anybody except for my dearest, closest friends. I put myself out there in a very public way. I've had a lot of feedback that has been very good and I thank you very much for that. That thanks me for being very real and raw and helpful to those people because they appreciated that. I have had some people who um, uh, weren't so kind. I don't really care. Um, please know that I'm older than that. I've got thick skin. You know how we deal with things when we're 50 and older? We just press delete. We don't, I don't bicker with anybody on social media or anything like that. I will simply delete and block you and that's okay. So I really want people to understand that I'm going to be very real, but people who know me also know this, that I want, I want to help people who want to help themselves. If you want to watch what we talk about, please do. If it's not something for you, then that's okay. There's many things on YouTube that you could um, spend your time wa watching. So I just really wanted to say that. So I really want to thank the people who have been incredibly encouraging and it has encouraged people and people do want to tune in. And then sure, there's all the, there's some naysayers and some haters, but it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter whatsoever. So I thank you very much for um, tuning in today. Um, and I will continue to do this um, um, video uh, blog and it is instead of me writing a book about my personal life so this is how I choose to do it so last not last week but the week before where we left off was when um, Ken and I we had met and after three years of courtship uh, we chose to have our son Alexander and when Alexander was eight months old we drove back from Abbotsford to St. Albert and our children uh, all of our children, but specifically Alexander at that time, um, in 1992, was born at the St. Albert Hospital. And I do want to give a shout out today to the all the nurses and doctors and the cleaning and janitor staff, just everybody, every single person who makes the St. Albert Hospital work. I want to give a shout out to you, not only for how you've handled um, all my, the pregnancies that I've had, miscarriages that I've had, but currently right now dealing with this global health crisis. So on a side note, but a very important note, I want to say thank you to the St. Albert Hospital here. So Alexander was born there in 1992 and in 1993, um, yes, I said we were unconventional. We had Alexander out of West wedlock and then we were married a year later. So our son Alexander was at our wedding. We were married in the uh, Matark Conservatory in Edmonton. And if you have not ever seen the Matark Conservatory, it's beautiful. It's very stunning. They are glass pyramids and in each one of them are different, um, are different uh, landscapes and different temperatures. One is uh, set up as a desert, one is set up as a rainforest, things like that. So it was absolutely beautiful and um, uh, so we were married in 1993. Now we, 
I want to just kind of back up because I'm not sure. Um, I want to explain something that when when I was 12, my mom and dad purchased some land in the town of Fawcett on the Pembina River. He had my parents uh, acquired many acres there, but it was all treed. It did need to be cleared, and so in from the age of 12, um, my my parents and, and my sister and I would go out to Fawcett and we met many of our friends out there and we're going to speak a lot about that. So people have asked me, well, you mentioned this and you mentioned that. What I want to do in this video is give you an oversight of my, bra my background and where we've been. But then along the way, we're going to go, I'm going to go back to the different stories. But when I do that, I'm going to be doing that with some of my friends and some of my family who have expressed um, a lot of interest to be able to talk about um, their experience with me and my experience with them and how it was and everything. So I really want to have that to be um, something that we do. So please know that that I might just skim over things right now in these first couple um, videos in order to kind of explain who I am and give some background. But then I'm going to fill it in with some of my friends and family and we're going to talk about those topics. Um, so when we had come back um, from BC, we were living at my mom and dad's house for only about five months. And there came a time when, um, after Alexander was born, like I said, about five months, that we were able to purchase a house. And it was wonderful, 132 Mission Avenue, I'll never forget it. It was a super cute house and quite cheap at the time compared to what houses are now. Right, that was in uh, 1993. So that's that's a long time ago. Um, but in, but then and at that time, um, when I was lit, when when we had purchased 132 Mission, um, Ken was working at uh, Consolidated Gypsum and he was uh, um, working as a, a laborer and it was it was a incredibly hard job he provided amazing for our family and uh, and was that kind of a, a provider and worker for our family I stayed at home with Alexander I did have my own day home I had a few children come in that I looked after but after some time we really didn't feel that that's what we wanted to do um, and we really wanted to do something for ourselves that was our own business and so forth. And so something that um, was, very, um, was very courageous to do at the time. We decided to, that we wanted to sell our house and sell everything and learn how to build a 2,500 square foot building which was going to house a grocery store on one floor, so on one floor, and then we would live above it. So 2,500 square feet, the store's on one floor, and we would build our house. And um, one of the, my parents, of course, were key people in helping us to do that as they were entrepreneurs. But somebody I really want to um, acknowledge today was Joy Ray, one of my dearest, dearest friends, because she was in the economic bills, um, economic business development side of things. So she helped us a lot with the statistics. If we want to go to the bank and we want to create a business model and a business loan and and uh, uh, and ask for things and, and talk about what we want to do for our business, how does that look? You can't just go to the bank and get that done. So we learned a lot about what that takes and what the statistics were to have a grocery store in rural Alberta because we were leaving from St. Albert to go um, north to the town of Fawcett which is half an hour north of Westlock. So and at that time you know what are the statistics? Who's out there? How, what kind of groceries are you going to have and things like that. So it, she really played a, a key part in that and one of the reasons why I really want to talk about that today is because we are faced right now with a time when we are in our homes and we can be creative and create our own business and our own companies and so forth. And so that is something that Ken and I did years ago, okay? But you can do it again. You can think about doing things like that now, okay? Ken and I went to the School of Hard Knocks and learned a lot. We went... And I'm going to um, choose to kind of 
end with this now because I really want to encourage people to see what are your gifts, what's important to you, how can you use those right now to become maybe self-employed because what if we can't go out, out and have an employer? I have, Ken and I have not received a paycheck from somebody else since we moved in 1993. We raised four children in the town of, uh, in, in Fawcett and in St. Albert, self-employed since 1993. This is a whole different ball game right now with polygraph and everything, but I choose to leave here now um, to let you know how we started to create the, um, the business plans and how it was going to look and, and what time frame it was from us to move from St. Albert out to Fawcett and then I'm going to talk about that time. So please think about that. What kind of things would you like to do? If you don't have a job to go to, could you create one on your own? And I think you can. Thank you for tuning in today. Have a great day.